What are humanoid robots? Are they robots that can walk? Are they robots that have two arms? Are these robots that do stuff that humans can do? Or are they just robots for PR reasons? And then, how do they benefit logistics? All of these questions will be covered in a new series of podcast episodes here at Automation Awakenings. So tune in and enjoy this deep dive. Automation Awakenings, your weekly dose of best practices for logistics automation. Welcome to the next episode of the Automation Awakenings podcast. And this episode brings several new things to our little podcast. The only thing what remains, we are back in our studio. I'm again with Matthias, but already here we have some news, right? That's right, Oli. And uh, yeah, welcome back, everyone. Um, I married and I took over the last name of my wife. So I'm called Kublitz now as the last name. So yeah, if you search for me on LinkedIn, make sure to Google already or to type in already this new name. In addition to this, there is additional new things that we want to introduce. First of all, we're going to shorten down our episodes. That's the feedback we got from the community and we are happy to adhere to it. In addition to this, we are starting into a totally new topic. So we are leaving the mobile robots a little bit behind us and we are taking a look at a very exciting and, well, very, very prominent new technology with the humanoid robots. And in today's episode, we're gonna dive into the definition of this technology to make sure we create a foundation for all the next episodes that will follow and which will build upon each other to provide you guys the best possible start into this topic. And we promise you, we will not talk just faster to fit in the 15 minutes, <laughs> but we try to focus um, on clear topics uh, for you so you get more information, better information in the same time. And I have to change the little caption with uh, Matthias. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. So I must not forget about that. And Matthias, you already said something interesting. You said we, we're going to go rather out of the mobile robots topic and talk about humanoids. But is a humanoid not a mobile robot? Yeah, so this actually already leads us into the into the definitions discussion. And I found a really interesting um, classification um, that many experts out there use. And they say that humanoid robots are part of the limped robots family. Oli, what do you think is a limped robot? Well, seems to be a robot with a limp. At Correct. least one, right? So everything that has an arm, a leg, with or without foot. Yeah, exactly. So uh, a robot with a, with a limp, basically. And this big category falls into four groups again. Um, the first group is one you know from Disney World, for example. So if you go there and you meet Shrek, you meet Donald Duck, you meet um i don't know what do we else what else do we have mickey mouse mickey mouse mickey mouse yeah <laughs> hello <laughs> <laughs> if, if you meet them um it might be just dressed actors but in some of the parks they are actually already robots and they're able to interact with you they are doing tricks they are moving and um, they are talking and, and this is exactly the first category so entertaining limbed robots Matthias, what about Star Wars? Um, how how was was the name of it? This uh, X something. Three CPO or C three PO. This know. golden robot. Yeah. This is also an entertaining ent entertainment robot, right? Yeah, I mean it was used for movie purposes, and uh, I'm not sure if there was a human actually sitting inside of it. I think but there was uh, a human, but I in the movie it was a robot. Yeah. So I, I, I bet there is, uh, there is fun parks where you can uh, visit Star Wars uh, movie scenes and Star Wars movie um, actors, so to say. 
and I bet they are entertaining robots today. So uh, exactly the same category. Okay. Also, those little like robot dogs that were uh, f famous like in the twenty tens that you could buy, you know. Uh, okay, they also count into that category. Yeah, they have limbs. <laughs> yeah, right. They have limbs. They can move. So, yeah. So they are part of this group, and they are made to entertain people. That's their job. But this is not a humanoid. It's an animaloid. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, right. Let's let's uh, just wait for another second. We're going <laughs> to come to the humanoids uh, in just a minute. So this is the entertainment uh, part of this family. The second one is the therapeutic part of it. Mm -hmm. So these are robots, limbed robots, that are used to support people or humans with disabilities. Could be an exoskeleton to, to carry, well, people that are not able to walk could be also um, artificial limbs for humans, like hands, for example, right? Mm -hmm. um, ah, yeah, sure. So, so, so that's basically another uh, group within this family um, that is made for therapeutic purposes. Um, then additionally, we have the informative limbed robots. That's mostly the guys you would find in lobbies of hotels, you would find at big airports. Um, they sometimes do not even look very uh, human robot like. Um, I just remember from Modern Family, there was like this one episode where they had this, um, it was like a segue basically with a tablet on it. Ah, yes. There was, okay. Do, do, do you know this episode? I remember some pictures of it, yeah. That that was like a steered. Um, steered remotely and then uh, the guy could follow them um <laughs> you know being on the tablet so this kind of stuff you know um let's just leave it like this informative limbed robots and then finally we have the utilitarian limbed robots and this is exactly where humanoids are um, located at humanoids and by the way also quadrupeds so that's basically the boston dynamic dog that you have seen a thousand times. And that's a quadruped. That's a quadruped, yeah. And they are made for utility reasons. That's their job. Mm -hmm. they, have to, they have to perform. Honestly, there is not really many use cases out there. Maybe there is none out there where they are really bringing a big benefit at the moment. But they're all across media and yeah, well, have a lot of PR. Exactly. Depends what is benefit for you. Um, I've seen there is uh, one of those quadrupeds, which you can buy actually on Alibaba.com. <laughs> yeah, it's only about $5,000. So Not Timu. Maybe also Timu. So it, it seems to be affordable. And the only job of this little dog is that it follows you when you go out for a walk. Can it carry something? No. Maybe a, a bottle of water. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's all. You, you like you start it, and it it will follow you. Okay. Like a companion for going for a walk or okay. doing some sports outside. Mm -hmm. But that would then again almost be part of the entertaining uh, group. Yeah, right. Because it doesn't have a use in terms of utility. So yeah, I think that's true. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't see it in that group. So it's together with Mickey Mouse. Then. It's together with Mickey Mouse in Disney World. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> exactly great that we clarified this and then finally <laughs> there is uh, like a last group that is sitting in between of all of these groups so it's basically in the middle and that's a so-called share pass okay and this is exactly where you have the robots that probably will handle household stuff in the future you know so uh, like, a, like, like a mixture of all of it so probably you can talk to them they're going to answer. They're going to be funny. Um, they're going to be able to wash dishes or um, serve you a glass of water, which is very utilitarian. Um, and uh, yeah, they might also be informative to a certain extent. So maybe you can <laughs> ask them, um, hey, w w what's the weather tomorrow? And they can answer. So, um, oh. so, so, it's, so it's like a merge of pre all of these, of these, um, of these categories. Um, with therapeutic um, being 
um, uh, or kicking in if they help elderly people, for example, to do household stuff, right? Then it's really covering all of these groups. Yeah, I think we are all looking forward towards these robots to manage the dishwasher, for example. Yeah, all right, or to cook, or to clean, um, or to take care of people, like caretaker robots, right? Um, yeah, so very, very exciting. Uh, I already see that it's going to be so many topics to be discussed. Oh, yes. And for sure, in the next episode, we're going to dive into more thoughts on why this topic is also a big buzzword, a big promise, a big vision in logistics at the moment. Mm, I bet there is no conference, there is no fair at the moment where this topic is not being uh, discussed, is not being um, yeah, argued to a certain extent. And um, so should we do. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But Matthias, now I think we need to clarify based on your definition. What about a mobile manipulator? I mean, the underwriter with the cobot on top yeah. of it yeah. or any type of arm on top of it. Is this a, counts as a limp? Is it then a kind of humanoid? Or what do you think? Yeah, I actually think it's it's somewhat also merging into this group in a way. Um, I mean, humanoids, the classic humanoids that we're going to talk about, they also have a big bunch of AI in it for sensing, for interacting mm. and so on. So with the mobile manipulators, I don't see this at the moment. They're rather strictly utilitarian. So go from A to B, do this and that, and then just go to the charging station and leave me alone, right? Um, yeah, right. Rather straightforward tasks without any decision-making also. Exactly. Yeah. No decision-making. Um, yeah, so I would, I would say they somewhat touch this to a certain extent, and maybe we're going to see some merging in the future. But right now, I would say they are not... In this, not not to be seen in this group simply, because the purpose um, is 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 not is not really going a lot towards this sensing, interacting, and um, um, yeah, and this artificial intelligence topic. All right, understood. Yeah, I think it's great that we laid the foundation today to explain what is in scope and outside yeah. of our mm -hmm. new chapter uh, here at Automation Awakenings. After we clarify this, um, can you give us a little outlook on what we're going to talk about in the next episodes? Yeah, for sure. So next episode will be all about why humanoids are such a promise, such a vision uh, in logistics. Um, then the episode after is going to be a bit of a history lesson. Um, so we're going to take a look at how the whole humanoid um, family basically developed over the years um, and where we stand at the moment. And then, well, after that, we're going to go more into discussing particular robot types and providers that are already um, they're already active in the logistics sector that already have some some pilot use cases out in the field to to cover that and that's not going to be all so we're going to continue to <laughs> to um, add topics that are already in our pipeline so we would be happy if you if you tune in um, if this content is is helping you please leave us a like and also make sure to follow us on YouTube on Spotify on uh, Apple Podcasts to not miss out um, and to benefit from the research, to benefit from the content that we provide you here in the podcast. All right, then this is already the end of this first episode of the new chapter. So see you next week. See you next week. Take care and goodbye.
This was another episode of the Automation Awakenings podcast. Visit us at automation-awakenings.com 